the motion was moved to, to introduce the regulations, which would bring it all into force in the Isle of Man. It failed because the branches were in division. You must be disappointed by that. I am disappointed both that the EU GDPR has not been applied directly um, this month in the Isle of Man and also that Tinwood uh, voted like that. Um, coming back next month for a combined vote, need to get 17 members in Tinwood, but I've got a higher ambition for that than that. Basically, I'm absolutely confident that the approach that the government is taking is the right one and will deliver GDPR legislation which is fully fit for purpose, lawful, effective, providing a wide range of powers for the Information Commissioner alongside protecting the rights of people who uh, personal data is being processed. Of course, I need to respond to the points raised by Laurie Hooper in the debate, um, and I will do. There are some bigger issues around about secondary legislation, about EU legislation in the minds of some of my other colleagues. Um, and what's really important to emphasise is that uh, the Information Commissioner has given a completely adequate, accurate uh, explanation of where we are now for everybody affected on his web page with a press release, and I can talk about that more as well if you want, Catherine. Well, that, that, that's a that's a good point. What happens now? I mean, we we have been told all along that this is it's imperative that it comes in. The Isle of Man has to keep pace; it has to comply. Um, there's now at least a month's delay to this. What are the implications of that? So, basically, my colleagues went over to Brussels uh, a few weeks ago to talk with the European Commission, the officers there. They showed them the draft implementing regulations, the ones that Tim Wood has not yet approved, the orders and the law under which those orders and those regulations are made. And in um, Brussels, I think there was a, a bit of a delight. There was certainly a positive um, indication that our approach was positive from the officers there because what we've done is a bit different from other places. What we've done is we've applied directly using European Union law the principles into the Isle of Man. So it's very easy to read if you're a German or a French person or uh, somewhere else in the EU thinking of doing business around the Isle of Man. And isn't that helpful? Why would we be localising something such that it's convenient for our lawyers to do business locally? Because this is about international facing businesses mostly um, doing business with foreigners. So therefore, consequently, um, where we are now at the moment is the Data Protection Act 2002 carries on locally. Um, EU GDPR is in force in the EU, so uh, that, there are implications for people who do businesses elsewhere. And I'll be taking, on behalf of Cabinet Office and Council Ministers, implementing regulations back um, to Tim Ward next month. And I really do hope that my colleagues support it sufficiently such that we have that in place, perhaps for 1st of August or perhaps even sooner, earlier in July. You mentioned there the direct import importation of EU legislation to the Isle of Man. That's something that a lot of members took issue with. Um, isn't there a case for saying it should be looked at and, and from a Manx perspective? It isn't a carbon copy. The, the directive applies automatically inside the EU. We're outside the EU. The directive gives loads of choices to member states and we've made loads of choices um, inside the orders which were approved unanimously in Timwood last month. So that part's already happened. So we've, we've localised it, we've, look, we, we've thought through in, in terms of our scale and in terms of our business and in terms of our individuals and charities what needs to be changed locally. We did all that last month. Now we've got the implementing regulations which take that a bit further and uh, the approach has been confirmed. Um, I think there are people who think they needed more than two weeks to read this legislation, fine, we can have a longer term consideration, but don't live in fantasy land. You know, having two weeks to consider legislation means for most people that you're going to have to have another set of lawyers in Tim World looking at it because government has its lawyers, AG works neutrally, helps private members um, draft uh, amendments and, and so on. But, uh, you know, we can have two sets of lawyers helping political members um, looking things up, but that's for the future. That's a change of approach. Fine, we can change the way we bring in EU law into the Isle of Man, but that's for the Longer, um, in, in the longer run, this approach for bringing in EU law, UK law has been around for decades and it's a perfectly accepted way of doing it, modifying it always where we can for the local needs. So there are some big issues that need to be fixed in the medium term and in the short term. I've got to be frankly, I am disappointed and there are lots of businesses out there who've told me already they're disappointed. We've got to um, work with colleagues to make sure that they understand that this is an important piece of legislation for our economy, for our businesses, for our people, and also ultimately for our international reputation. 
it's not immediately pressing. It doesn't not going to make a great deal of difference if it's in August rather than in July or September or whatever. But um, within the next couple of years, we will be reassessed for adequacy by the EU. We now have regular dialogue with officers across. They're happy with what we're proposing. Um, let's not mess it up. Now, although most businesses on the Isle of Man seem to be resigned to the fact that this is going to come in uh, and they will have to comply with it, there is still some concern over the cost and the financial burden it's going to place on businesses and the fact that it it can tie them in knots trying to keep up with it. Yeah, um, yeah. there are lots of adverts on Manx Radio for GDPR consultants, like there are elsewhere. And yeah, the cost of the information commissioner in Jersey, which is uh, in Guernsey, is much higher, much larger than it is in the Isle of Man. And I will be launching a consultation about a new fee structure to get from where we are now in terms of cost to where the, um, the, the, the cost will be in a few years' time, depending on the decisions we make about the governance and the activity and the independence of our information commissioner. These are important issues for government. Um, in conjunction with the information commissioner and the public businesses out there can be assur assured of two things firstly we will retain our adequacy directive we will make sure we do things right and secondly we will do things carefully properly in the right basis so that we um, have a properly independent and perceived to be independent information commissioner well structured um, to make sure that the privacy principles are complied with as uh, personal data is processed and all the other things that happen to it. So you're bringing this back for a combined vote in July. What are the implications if Tinwald collectively votes against the, introducing these regulations? Well, there's two aspects to that. One is what could what could we do next in that hypothetical situation? I suppose one, we could find out why Tinwald's voted against it and change what we're doing and bring them back another time. You know, if we decide not to comply with EU GDPR, we'd basically be um, deciding that we couldn't allow controllers and processors of data to um, to offer goods or services and, and monitor because we're not monitoring the behavior of individuals in the way that's implied in thing into the EU so we'd be uh, taking away a source of gold from a particular sector an important sector of the Isle of Man's economy. Yeah.